Oof. Right. <laughs> Kettlebell complex. Let's get loose. First stretch of the day, full press up position, lift those hips, stretch out the posterior chain, you know the drill. Make the most of this, okay? If you're feeling any restriction, any tightness, etc., any limitation in your ability to get up, get it addressed now. Lift the pelvis, point the tailbone, lock the knees out, but don't push back on them too hard, and try and push the heels towards the ground. Upper body, arms, push those arms away from you. Lock them out, try and push the upper body towards the ground while also thinking about that pelvis and pointing it upwards. When you're ready, we bring the feet together, we transition down, we put that spine into overextension ever so carefully, ever so gently, see how things are. And again, the purpose here is not to put crazy amounts of stress on your lower back here. The purpose is to put that spine into overextension, support it with a bit of tension in the butt, a bit of tension in the core, and push up. Okay, I'm trying to get my nose to touch the ceiling, not fold myself backwards, if that makes sense, because a lot of people in this movement, very soft, Okay, too relaxed, and they're bending themselves back to the point where they're feeling hellish amounts of stress on the lower back. Nice, easy stretch. We're lifting back up again, feet to shoulder width apart. You know the drill, break into it a bit further by getting those side bends in. Okay, twist the torso, keep the stretch, establish the stretch, and then get the side bends in. Okay, don't be doing the side bends and losing the stretch that's in your lower body. Reach across with opposite arm to opposite leg as well. Try and open up those hips a bit more. Very important and very good mobility drill, this whole sequence that we're doing first before we do kettlebells, okay? We're hitting all those big muscle groups. We need them moving well, we need them fluid. Drop back down when you're ready. This is the last one. Again, it's not a case that you're trying to take it far, 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 far. It's just a case you're trying to mobilize that spine and all those big muscle groups in and around the front and back of our body. And then we're going to lift the hips, put the feet shoulder width apart, and I want you to keep the legs fairly straight. Walk the arms all the way in. Try not to bend the knee excessively, but keep it soft until you feel a good stretch. Tuck the chin in. Feel that lower back getting a wee bit of a stretch out. Again, see how things feel. Shake out. Hip sequence. Swings. Side swings. Toe touches. Hip hinge, should we call it. Let's do it. Good quality leg swings, focusing on the stretch. Swinging forward, swinging back, trying to take it out a wee bit further with the stretch. Okay, it's all done off of fuel, this one. We're not just aimlessly chucking the leg around for the sake of it. Good, and turn and face what you're holding on to. Open up the hips further with these side swings, and again, we're focusing on a swing as far as we can left and right. It's not just one side we're focusing on. Across the body is just as important as away from the body. And then we're changing legs. and into our hip hinge. So our hip hinge, think about it. Start off with a kettlebell swing movement. Stand up tall, nice and proud, shoulder blades pulled together, knees soft, and then I'm pushing my hips back. Feeling a bit of tightness, I'm not gonna give into it yet. I'm not, I can't touch the ground, I'm tight. So I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna go again, just trying to take it out a wee bit further until I'm reaching the ground, until I tap the ground by pushing my hips back. Don't reach for it, don't preempt it. I'm pushing those hips back. Oh, that's it. Seagulls must know we've started the class. Here they are, piping up. Blooming Nora. <laughs> hips back, hips back, hips back. 
good. So now I am able, and now I've established what normal mobility I have, I'm touching the ground. So now I'm gonna take it further and I'm gonna break form to reach behind. And with that, with a slight tuck of the chin, you're gonna get a decent stretch out in the lower back here. Okay, so we're taking it further. <sighs> Squeezing the butt, building up that movement pattern of the kettlebell swing. Obviously we're going much further than we would on a kettlebell swing, but I'm trying to get <sighs> the whole sequence in my head before I even think about getting into it. Right, set yourself up for squats, okay? We're gonna squat, we're gonna open up the hips, feet roughly shoulder width apart, and as always from the side, it's all about the spine. I'm trying to keep this spine nice and neutral, squatting down, pull the knees apart, elbows into knees, force the chest up proud, establish that good solid squat, Good. You can get into the ankles if you're able to, but if you are, remember we're trying to keep the focus on the groin, okay? Pull the knees apart, force the chest up, and stand up and shake out. Good. And let's go again. Let's do another one. So again, think about the spine. It usually goes wrong when people try to go too low. Elbows into knees, force the chest up. Good. And then when you're ready, stand up and shake out. Happy days, jogging on the spot, nice and light in the toes. There we are now, go, go, go. Squeezing the shoulder blades, getting that good stretch across the chest and shoulders. And think about the shoulders themselves, okay? Keep them in the joint, straight arms up, same again, that's where most people are gonna find a bit of tightness. We're lifting it up, we're pushing through. Lifting it up, pushing through, trying not to give in to the tightness by shrugging our shoulders or bending the elbows, but you know all this already, let's be honest, don't you? <laughs> Good. And focus not just on the lift, but on the way back. You get that in there, we'll hit that tight spot in here that a lot of us get. Okay, so focus on the way back, just as the way forward. Good, jumping jack style arms only, keeping the shoulder blades pulled together. Good. Think about the shoulder joint. Again, try to minimize any shrug, any bend of the arm. Fantastic. Good, shoulder shrug, steady the feet there, up, back, big circles. Pushing down, we're exaggerating these, we're exaggerating them. Going as far as you can, up and back. And then change direction, same again, when you're ready. Good, and finally, chin tucks. Tuck the chin, get that stretch up the neck, extensors, back of the neck, keep the shoulders level. Just take our time. Good. So your heart rate won't be sky high, everybody. It's not meant to be at this point in time. I want you loose, I want you mobile, I want you warmed up a little bit. Right, grab your kettlebells, get yourself ready. We're going to practice very quickly the exercises and then we're getting straight into this. Right. Very quickly. I want you to practice these exercises with me, okay? It's forming part of the warm-up. So if you've got lighter kettlebells, pick a lighter one, okay? Because it is very much the warm-up. We're going to very, very quickly over the space of two minutes or less practice all eight exercises. They're basics. We've done them before. You should have done them before. It's about throwing them into a circuit and practice, practice, practice and making them better, okay? First one, kettlebell swing, double-handed, good old classic. Make sure we're picking that kettlebell up from our stance. We're driving those toes hard into the ground. If you look at my feet, as a kettlebell swing, my feet shouldn't budge. You should really feel, and I say it every time, you should feel like your feet have been glued to the floor. You should never be rocking. You should never feel the weight shuffling backwards and forwards to your toes and heel. Drive the toes hard, it's so important. Snap those hips through, squeeze the butt. We should never feel, and what I see a lot of people making the mistake of, you should never feel like the kettlebells are way out here and you're reaching for it. I see a lot of people swinging like this. See how forward I am? All that stress in the lower back, I'm on the toes, I'm not in a good solid position, I'm leaking power all over the shop. We should feel, again, it starts with the feet, drive the toes in, the whole weight distributed across the whole foot at all times, hips back, snap them forward. Stood up tall and proud, like you're getting your height taken. You know you're doing it right, because see when that kettlebell locks out and you snap the hips at eye level, that kettlebell should feel weightless. It should feel like there's no force there at all. If you feel like you're reaching away out like that, you're doing it wrong. And it starts with the feet, okay? Just fine tuning points. Next exercise is gonna be a snatch on the left arm from the ground. We're starting. 
Now, as always, I will only say it this time because for the rest of the circuit, I'm going to refer to it as the snatch. If you can't do a single arm swing, that's what you're going to be doing. If you can do that, you're going to be working on your high pulls. If you can do your high pulls, challenge yourself with the snatch. The only way I want you not doing the snatch is if the kettlebell you've got is just too heavy. Okay? Happy with that? So I won't mention them again. You're either going to be doing single arm swing, or you're going to be doing your high pull, or ideally, I want you to be doing these snatches up, chest proud. It's a kettlebell swing. Only difference is, with this kettlebell swing, I'm pulling the weight up, high elbow punch the sky. Pulling it up my body, high elbow punch the sky, back down. It's a kettlebell swing. Do not overcomplicate it. We're changing to the other arm. When you're first starting the snatch, if your kettlebell is a bit heavy, there's nothing wrong with picking it up, starting with a few swings just to get the momentum going. And then remember, pull it up the body, punch. Pull it up the body, punch. You're trying to pull that elbow high, just like the high pull. And then we punch. It almost happens at the same time. High elbow punch. I can't even say it fast enough. High elbow punch. It will never work if you hold back. He who hesitates fails on that exercise. It's all out flat out. You can't slow it down. If you think about it, you're going to fail. Okay, fail in the sense of it's going to go to pot or you're going to crush it too hard and it's going to come up and you're going to end up pressing it. That's where a lot of people go wrong. They bend the elbow far too early and they end up having to press it, but in a real messy way. High elbow, punch. High elbow, punch. It gets to here. It gets to here from the power, whack, in the hips. So this part, we're not really using that much upper body. And from the momentum created, that flick, again, we shouldn't be using too much. Shoulder only really kicks in when we lock out to stabilize. But again, it takes practice. Four, fourth exercise, kettlebell clean and press. Again, work on the basics. Chest proud, overhand grip, drive, racked position. Do I need to say it? Squeeze the hell out of it. Lock the wrist out, elbow pulled in tight. Punch. Now you can either do it strict, as in like this, punch, pull down, or if your kettlebell's feeling a bit heavy, or you're getting tired, bend the knees, boom, push press it, pull it down. Look at the elbow. It's not out here. The kettlebell is not resting on my shoulder. It's pulled in from the side. You can see it again. Kettlebell is just simply resting on the outside of my wrist. Happy days, butt squeezed, everything nice and tight, basics. Back to the floor. Other arm, up, squeeze the hell, establish the racked position. Punch, pull down, flick off. Chest proud, drive the feet, snap the hips. Establish the racked position. Punch. When I say establish the racked position, I mean, boom, it's solid. Squeeze the hell out of it, make it feel good, make it feel like it's part of your body. Before you press and before you drop it back down to the floor. So it's always back down to the floor after each rep. After that, everyone, renegade rows. If you've got a heavier kettlebell, after a few rounds, I encourage you to try using the heavier kettlebell. Arm, full press up position, arms in the center to help with balance. Beginners, real wide stance with the legs. By having your legs wide apart, you're helping your balance so your core doesn't have to work so hard. As you get better, bring the feet together, squeeze the butt, boom. And that's when you really feel the movement. <sighs> you're trying to row, but you're trying to keep your body in the full press up position like I'm showing you now. You're trying to row it, <sighs> without anything moving other than your arm. Okay, so we shouldn't be doing this. Oh, see how I've rotated? Oh, no, no, everything's solid. Only thing moving is that elbow being pulled high. Happy days, and then we change arms, and then finally we're gonna finish off with a good old goblet squat so that we're still getting a little bit of work in on the legs. Tidy this up, we're holding it on the horns. Okay, crushing the hell out of it. It might get your biceps and shoulders tired, but that's the whole point, okay? A lot of people start holding it lazily, like this, okay, or they hold it upside down to make it a wee bit easier. We don't do that here. We're building up your grip strength. We want better grip strength, so we must hold it properly. When you're at the bottom of your squat, really keep that chest proud. Don't let this start to pull you forward. Happy with that, everybody? Simple, basics, but doesn't mean to say they're easy. Focus on them, focus on making them better. Take your time, don't rush them. 30 seconds, 30 seconds and we go. So for me, it's the first run through, not quite there yet. So I'm gonna use my lighter, not a light, but lighter kettlebell because I've got the luxury of the choice. So I'm gonna pick one that's not too challenging, but it's gonna get my heart rate up, okay? If you're able to, I recommend you do the same. 
and then from there on in, you can go heavier, even heavier, and then even heavier, and bring it back down. It's up to you. Five seconds. Pick these kettlebells up. Good solid grip. Kettlebell swing. Let's get the show on the road. Ding dong. Go for it. Punch. Punch those hips forwards. Squeeze the hell out of the butt. Chest proud. Drive the feet. Drive the toes. It is all in the hips. It should feel in your head. It should be all about the hips. 30 seconds of work straight in to our snatches on the left arm. Now remember our transitions. Stand by, change into the left hand snatch, up and punch and down. Or high pulls, or single arm swings. Now remember, it's not gonna be pretty if you're not very good at them because you've not done them very much. So realize that. The kettlebell swing at heart, hips back, snap them forward. Five seconds, we're gonna change arms. Let's see if you can change arms. Go, by doing a single arm swing, change, straight up. Beautiful. Again, that takes time. But if you remember, that single arm swing. We don't need to put the kettlebell down when the buzzer goes. Good. In the next exercise, we will do kettlebell clean and press. Form's tight. It's looking good. It's feeling good. If not, slow it down. Change. Overhand grip. Other arm. Clean. Rack it. Punch it. Pull it down. Flick it off. Change arms. No, don't change arms. Don't change arms. <laughs> All on the one arm first. Think about every part of it. Okay, set up from the floor, chest's proud, I'm driving, snapping my hips. Establish the rack position, punch, pull it down, flick it off. Chest proud, stand by to change. Change arms, but finish the rep you're on. Really think about these racked positions. Crush the hell out of it. If your wrist feels soft, no good. Think about the takeoff from the floor. Really drive your feet. Really snap your hips. Boom. Punch. Remember, if your kettlebell is a bit heavier, push press it. Good. Next exercise, renegade rows. Finish the rep you're on and change. Finish the rep you're on. Good. And then we're down. Starting on the other arm. Full press up position. Pull. Tap the floor. Pull. The whole purpose of this is to be able to pull that kettlebell up, row it to the side of your rib cage without any of your body except that arm and shoulder moving. Good work. Keep the hips tight. Don't lift them. Stand by to change. Go. See if you can change just by simply swapping arms and not putting your knees down. A tough exercise. A tough core exercise. As you lift that arm, your hips don't tilt. Your belly button remains pointing down and your chest remains pointing down. As it gets easier, bring the feet closer together and you'll feel that core working harder. Tough exercise, real strength exercise for the whole core, including the lower back. Change, stand up, goblet squats. Pick the kettlebell up, grip it by the horns, crush it, squat down, squeeze the butt to lock out. Just think about the hips, everybody. That is your powerhouse. The hips are the powerhouse. Just like a kettlebell swing, they're behind us. Smack them forward. Squeeze the butt, get the power into that squat. Shoulder blades pull together, chest proud. Yes. Relax there. Take 60 seconds. I do apologize for some reason. The time my volume's the way down, even though I turned it up right when we start. Good. So, first round's done. You're familiar with exercises? You know what needs to get done. Now it's time to either go a bit heavier or stay the same weight, obviously, if that's all you've got. That's absolutely fine. Good. 30 seconds. Okay, kettlebell swings. Good work, everyone. We should be working on these basics. They should be starting to feel better. Don't overthink it too much, okay? Do not overthink it too much. 
all I want you really thinking about, and all I'm thinking about on most of these movements is that whack, whether it's a kettlebell swing, whether it's a hood snatch, whether it's a high pull, it's all in the hips, most of it. Stand by, go. Chest proud, squeeze the butt. Drive the toes. Feet are solid, cemented to that ground. Chest proud, shoulder blades pulled together. Crush the hell out of that kettlebell, everybody. So it snatches next, or high pulls, or single arm swings. I can just change. Don't even need to stop. So we've just done the kettlebell swing first to tune your brain into the fact of how to do a kettlebell swing effectively. Don't lose it, it's the same thing. Snap the hips. Everything that's happening at the waist and below is the same as the kettlebell swing. The only difference is I'm pulling up with that high elbow and punching the sky. I'm directing that power. Change with a single arm swing if you're able to into the next rep. The only thing, sorry I'm changing with the snatch from the kettlebell swing is I'm channeling the power upwards overhead rather than out to the front. Clean and press next. Always finish the rep you're on everybody. Try to make these transitions slick. Now obviously, we'll be starting on the floor. It'll be a dead hang, a dead hang, a dead lift. Overhand grip, chest proud, drive the feet, snap the hips, crush, establish, establish this rack position. Punch, pull down out the sky, flick it off. Overhand, I've changed arms, just ignore me. Bad habits, we always change arms usually. So do it all on the one arm, can't help myself. Remember the basics. Punch it, pull, pull that kettlebell, change arms. Change arms, pull the kettlebell out the sky rather than lower it, pull. Okay, what will happen there is you'll keep your shoulder blade pulled together. You'll keep that shoulder solid in the joint. A lot of the time when we think about lowering, all that goes soft. So it should always feel tight. Chest proud, drive the feet, snap the hips, establish the rack position. Press it, pull it down, back to the floor. Renegade rows, finish the rep you're on now. Don't quit it early. Change arms, renegade row style. Boom, real tough core exercise. Think about the hips. Try to walk the feet in closer each rep as you get more confident, as you increase your stability. The arm that's on the ground, you push. You're pushing that ground away from you. You're trying to bury that hand in the ground, getting that stability. Change your arms if you're able to without resting, but only if, only if you're able to. Feel the butt squeeze, feel the core squeeze. Emphasize it. Stand by for goblet squats. Don't preempt. As soon as the buzzer goes, a nice tidy finish and a nice tidy transition. Stand up, pick the kettlebell up safely, grip it by the horns, chest proud. Squat to the depth you're able to. Maintain form. Drive the toes. Now with a goblet squat, you should feel that you're able to sit into the squat more. Okay? You're staying more vertical. You're sitting into a chair. And that kettlebell becomes that counterweight to help you do so. Good work. Whoa. Well done, everyone. Catch your breath. Okay? Got a minute's rest. 45 seconds rest. <laughs> Walk around, catch your breath. Good. Woo! Right. Okay. So, at this point in time, it really depends what kettlebell you're using, how things are feeling. If it's fairly light and your reps are happening pretty fast, your heart rate will be up. If you're like me, you're kind of borderline. I'm using a weight that's a nice divide, okay? It's challenging. I'm able to complete the reps without failing or coming close to failure, but it's not that easy to just swing it around and move it around quickly. 20 seconds. 
So my point is it really depends what, what weight you're using and how you're finding each exercise in terms of what you're gonna feel you're getting out of this. But we're working on basics, the good strength, functional movements, building strength and power into your movement patterns. So more than anything, hopefully you're feeling like it's a good strength workout. Stand by, pick the kettlebell up, kettlebell swings, whack. So the legs of the kettlebell swing here, that'll get my heart rate up. Snatches, you'll really get my heart rate up. But remember, breathing. Control it always. Powerful, controlled breathing. You honestly cannot beat snatches. It's not what I'm saying. Snatches, go. You can't beat a kettlebell workout in terms of we're getting cardio, we're building strength. You're bringing together what we call it and why we call it a cardio strength workout. You're getting the benefits of getting the heart and lungs working hard. But then you're adding in the benefits that you would get from a weight session. Breaking down the muscle with these heavier weights, causing damage to the muscles. And that, change arms. And that damage needs to be repaired, which is why we end up with an elevated calorie burn throughout the day after doing these classes, if you're pushing them hard, if your weight's fairly reasonable. But also we get the benefits of cardio, the hit, struggling to breathe, creating that oxygen deficit. Your heart rate will be a wee bit higher afterwards because that deficit needs to be caught up on. So ultimately, clean and press. On the one arm only, don't change arms. I'll get it right this time. Punch and pull down. So many benefits to kettlebells and why I really do love them and why we do them a lot now. You've got obviously the health benefits that I've just spoken about, the health and fitness benefits. But from the training side of things, it's highly functional. You're moving your body through movement patterns. Good. Well, I completely said that I wasn't going to do it. Change your arms. I've just done the whole set there. Changing arms. <laughs> Even as I told you I wasn't going to. So you'll be on the one arm only, that's fine. You can see me alternating arms. If you've ended up copying me, that's also fine. But I, we're building strength and power into these very functional movement patterns. Renegade rows next. And what does that mean for you? That means that when you're out doing things, working, gardening, picking up heavy objects, playing with the kids, etc., you're strengthening up your body through those movement patterns. The simple squats, the deadlifts, the kettlebell swings, the overhead presses. You're teaching your body how to apply that strength and power in the real world. And for many of us, the kettlebells not only highlight imbalances and weaknesses in our body and the different movement patterns that we do, it will fix them. If you're sensible, if you're patient and you understand what you're trying to do. In a nutshell, you just can't beat a good kettlebell workout. Goblet squat, stand up, deadlift the thing up, swing it up if it's heavy, grip it by the horns, and we squat to the best of our ability. Kettlebell doesn't move. I've got it pulled in tight. I don't drop it. I'm keeping my elbows underneath the kettlebell. Use it as a counterbalance to help you sit back into that squat. Pull those knees apart. Oof, that's a burner. Squeeze the butt at the top. Well done. Take a rest there, everyone. Great work, fantastic work. 60 seconds rest. Get some water on board if you need it, not too much, just a wee sip. Good. So, I don't know if you caught any of that waffle as I was going through that, but basically, this little thing can bring a lot of goodness to your life a lot of health benefits, a lot of uh, fitness benefits. We get cardio from it. 
We get strength and power from it. And it's very functional. We like that word nowadays, functional. There's no point going to the gym and building strength and power through a set range of movement that a machine works you in a very unnatural way because you won't take that out into the big bad world with you. Three seconds, we're going again. Last run through. Beast yourself, please. Last run through. So with these movement patterns, we're getting all the big muscle groups, compound movements we call them, where we're using multiple joints, multiple muscle groups at the same time. The way our body is designed to do things, the way we do things in the big bad world. And it's from a lot of errors and bad movement patterns. Good, into the snatch. Oh God, stop talking. <laughs> Hit it hard, push it hard, get it done. Every rep, it's one rep closer to you being better at these movements. They don't come easy, especially these snatches if you're doing them. They are tough, quite a decent bit of technique, but you understand them more by doing them, not by analyzing. Change arms, finish the rep you're on. So sure thing, you could go and watch a tutorial Nothing wrong with that. Pick up a few key points. Listen to the key points I'm always harping on about. Most of it being the hip snap. But you're gonna get better and have a better understanding by getting out there and practicing them. Making mistakes, learning from your mistakes. That's how we get better. Good, clean and press. One arm only, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Stay on the one arm. Put my other arm behind my back. Punch it, pull it down. Okay, so we clean it, we establish the rack, punch it, pull it down, establish the rack, flick it off. Up, establish the rack. How do we establish it? Squeeze the hell out of the kettlebell. Make sure the elbows change arms, but finish the rep you're on. Crush that kettlebell. Think of that electrical connection, always refer it to your grip. Got to get more power transmitted into the kettlebell if you're crushing it properly and you've got a proper point of contact. Loose grip, weak grip, you're going to be leaking power out all over the shop and the movement will suffer. Renegade rows. Good. Change your arms down. Renegade row style. So on those cleaning presses, you should still feel the hip snap, just like the kettlebell swing. We're using the power in those big muscles, the lower back, the glutes, the hamstring, the posterior chain we refer it to. We're using those muscles. Brute force, sure you could probably wing it, but you'll hurt yourself and you'll probably find it over time. You don't find yourself getting any better, any stronger. Change your arms if you're able to without resting. Think about those hips. It's better to fail than to lift the hips up. Lifting the hips up is worse than failure. Keep it tight, keep it solid. If you're not able to, don't drop to the knees unless you absolutely have to, but then shake out and go again. If it's tough, suck it up. It's meant to be. Let's get going. Crush the hell out of it. Let's do it. Squeeze the butt. Oh, yeah, beauty. Put that kettlebell down, walk around. I want you to take this minute rest. Well done, well done. Workout's done, but walk around. Shake the arms out. Shake the legs out. Get the breathing under control. And just take this 60 seconds. I appreciate everybody likes to rush off to their busy lives. But it's important. Bring yourself back down to earth before you do that, please. So to summarize in this minute, it's a kettlebell workout, okay? It's a kettlebell workout. Spoke about all the benefits during the workout if you caught them. 
basically a lot of health benefits of many fitness benefits we're building strength we're building power through functional movement patterns that's going to benefit you out in the big bad world whatever your hobbies are whatever you do in your spare time whatever you do for work if it's manual you're going to get stronger you're going to get better at those things kettlebells are going to fix kettlebells are going to fix imbalances that you have through these different range of movements and you'll feel them most people in all fairness their coals are weak and that includes your lower back and that's only because people don't really know how to activate their core a lot of people don't even know they're meant to a lot of people just presume that if they do a lot of core work they're going to get a strong core they're going to get better okay at doing these movements you're not well you are to a small degree but you need to build that core strength up in a way where your body knows how to use it. By doing with Renegade Rose, we're massively using the core. By doing with Snatches, one arm, off balance, massively using your core. By using your clean and press, one arm. What do you think keeps you from going like that with that weight? Okay, you get 12, 16 kilos here. What is it do you think that stops you going like that? The core, okay? Single arm kettlebell swings. What is it that stops you going like that and twisting and being pulled? Your core. Your core is a very functional area that needs to be trained functionally. There's nothing wrong with doing sit-ups, etc. But if you're trying to get your core stronger by doing sit-ups and working just simply the front, the abdominal area, you're going to forget about how to use the back. Your brain's not going to know how to do it. You're going to end up with an imbalance, which is going to affect your posture. But not only that, it's going to affect how you move and your strength throughout these movement patterns. We're going to get weak. Okay, so brilliant. Good work, everybody. And hopefully you're really starting to feel the benefits of these. It takes time. We worked on basics today. Basics doesn't mean easy, okay? Well, snatches, one of the hardest movements to master. Therefore, each time you do it, you should just feel, right, I'm getting a wee bit better. Sure, you'll have a bad day where your head's just not working, okay? It's just not happening. But on the whole, you should feel yourself getting gradually better and you get better by getting in the trenches and getting the work done, okay? Putting yourself through your paces. Sure, you can learn a few things watching a video, a few tips and things to maybe think about, but the only way you're going to get better is by practicing. Thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And that's Monday morning in the bag. It's in your bag. Maybe you're watching this on live and it's not Monday, but either way, you've done it. So good for you. Keep raising the bar. Keep raising the bar. It's your bar. Keep raising it.